all for electrification. No emissions, zero noise, easy to drive and all of that. But I won't wake up at 4 in the morning on a Sunday to drive an electric car. But this electrification, this is something that I can get behind. This is the Turbo Hybrid 911 and this is very unlike your Toyota Prius and all your other hybrids. This does not deliver 200 kmpl. This does not have any ports to plug in a charging cable. This will not even do any electric only range. Here, the hybrid use is for performance and performance only. We have to talk about the T-Hybrid system, but we have a 911, we have a racetrack. It's a beautiful sunny day. So first, we're gonna go out on the track, hammer in some laps, and then jump into the classroom and do a tech deep dive. Pit lane exit, floor it. Now, this is something similar to what you would do on the road, exiting a toll booth or launching from a traffic light. And that's where you see the difference in the GTS. In two and a half seconds, it pulls a gap of seven meters over the earlier GTS. So that is the response of the hybrid system. Engage launch control and you get zero to 100 in three seconds flat, 0.4 seconds quicker than the earlier GTS. The response is in fact so good, initial acceleration is better than the Turbo S that is leading our laps at the Ascari circuit. The PDK, it's a carryover from the earlier 992.1, it's the same gearbox as the Turbo. And when they launched the 992.1, that's when they said that that car was ready for hybridization and now the hybrid is here. So there is space in that gearbox for the small electric motor. There's in fact two electric motors, one in the PDK and one in the turbocharger. There's only one big turbocharger and the engine, it's an all new 3.6 litre engine, not the earlier 3 litre engine. In fact, there's so much new tech on this that we'll just take a breather from the track labs and go into the classroom. It's incredible the kind of stuff that you can do with virtual reality these days. So this obviously in the classroom, we have a 992.2 GTS. We have a virtual reality model of it. And now let's dive into all the individual components. So the main components of this new hybrid system. Up front, where you normally had the 12 volt battery, you have the new 1.9 kilowatt hour high performance battery, 27 kilos. So it actually adds a little bit more weight on the front axle. All the orange wires are the high voltage wires that you see and this being a 911 obviously you have the engine out back behind the rear axle so if you've noticed there are no e-motors on either of the axles neither on the front or the rear axle this is the e-motor and this e-motor is integrated into the front of the pdk when the 992.1 generation came in that time this gearbox housing it had space for this e-motor and now because of the e-motor you don't even need a starter motor the gts does not even have a starter motor that job is done by the e-motor in the pdk and that's why when you start it there's no chuck 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 and then it starts the catch is instant so on the flat six engine, the bore has increased to 97 mm, the stroke to 81 mm. So the ratio remains the same and the capacity goes up to 3.6 liters. The crankcase is the same. Overall height of the engine has been reduced by 110 mm. So on top, the high voltage controllers have space over there. There obviously is a restraint in terms of packaging because all of this is on the back side of the 911. So all of it has to fit in there. So this is the really cool part of the system. This is the turbocharger. One big turbocharger normally in a big turbocharger you have a lot of turbo lag but they have eliminated it and how they have done that is by integrating another e-motor in the turbocharger so the green thing that you see that's actually the e-motor and what that does is that spins up the turbine so when you actually get on the gas there's no real delay while the exhaust gases come in and then spool up the turbo no the turbo has already spooled up because of that e-motor now that e-motor it draws power from this very same turbo so when you're driving hard for instance 
you normally have a wastegate on a turbocharger but this motor it actually reverses and that actually slows down the speed of the turbine the turbine i think has a maximum speed of 200000 rpm so that slows it down and that actually recovers energy so it can recuperate energy up to 11 kilowatts and it can put back energy up to 20 kilowatts so while this motor is spinning so at the start itself almost at idle like in a normal ev you get almost 160 newton meters from this system so that's why you have that instant responses weight has been a critical focus area this entire system has added some 50 kilos of weight and the gts as standard does not have rear seats you can option it it's no extra cost but because there are no rear seats that's why the curb weight is 1595 kilos so under the 1600 kilo target <laughs> Net result, power is up 60 bhp to 534 bhp. Torque is up by 60 Newton meters. 0 to 100, like I said, 0.4 seconds quicker. 0 to 200 in 10.5 seconds. And top speed goes up by 1 kmph to 312 kmph. And the feel of this engine is very different to the regular 3 liter twin turbo in the Carrera. To get a sense of perspective, we had a go in the Carrera, which retains the 3-litre twin-turbo flat-six but uses the bigger turbo from the old GTS to boost power by 9 bhp to 389 bhp. And now listen to the new T-hybrid motor in the new GTS. First is the sound, the noise. It sounds more raspy, more motorsporty more raw you get a wine now first i thought that the wine would probably be from the turbos but that wine is that e-motor in the turbo which is actually spooling up the turbo and keeping it fully primed for when you need the acceleration the system always recuperates energy under acceleration during braking and on a trailing throttle even at the 312 kmph top speed, it continues to store kinetic energy in the battery. The response, that to me is shocking. Like, I'm going to step on it now. The response is phenomenal. And that actually enhances the whole driving experience because there is no momentary weight. It's just instant. The response is like exiting the corners. You step on it and it's instant. And that's because of the location of the e-motor. It's mounted in the PDK gearbox. It gives 150 Newton meters of torque, 60 bhp odd instantly. So it's almost like a electric car in the way it responds and accelerates. And this response is the reason for that 8.7 seconds quicker Nürburgring Nordschleife lap time. Let's take a quick break from sending it on track to look at what's new on the exterior and interior on the new 992.2. Styling updates have always been very, very minimal on the 911. You have to squint to make out the differences. Now on the 992.2, what you will notice, especially on the GTS, are these five sort of vents. Now these are movable flaps. They open and close depending on how much cooling you require. There's also another flap behind to adjust the drag because you don't want the car lifting up. The coefficient drag is actually better on this, so aerodynamics have improved. The headlamps are new, they are matrix LED lights. The indicators are also integrated in the headlamp, so it's no longer out here on the bumper. So you have more space for the cooling. So that's the slight update on the front. The profile, well, it's a 911 profile. There is no change in terms of profile. The iconic shape, the silhouette has been retained. And this is what makes this car iconic. And over at the rear, there's been a bit of cleanup. You get OLED tail lamps. On the GTS, you have the twin exhaust sort of near the center, sort of like the GT3 cars. On the regular Carrera, they are more spaced out. But otherwise, 
you really have to squint to make up the differences in the 911 and honestly speaking now when you come to think of it it's actually a good thing that this iconic shape is just retained with small little updates Again, interior updates are very minimal. So you now get a start-stop button. You no longer insert a key, nor do you have the thing sticking out there that you twist. It is a start-stop button. You get the new curved digital screen. So this is the same thing that you would find in a Panamera or in the Ken. No longer do you get an analog taco, which I miss. Obviously, the screen gives you more functionality, more features on it, all of that. But that analog taco in the center, that was such a cool touch on 911s. You have a newer touch screen for the infotainment. Porsche calls this the performance screen. There are obviously new screens, like this screen shows you all the workings of the hybrid system. And apart from that, I think it's got a new wireless charger out here. And that's about it for the changes. Of course, there is a lot of connectivity with Apple CarPlay. Porsche didn't say anything about Google Android Auto, so I don't think it even has Android Auto. But all of the CarPlay connectivity features are there on the infotainment when you want to use all of that. But others, most of the time, you just hit the Sport exhaust button, keep it in Sport and listen to that engine. The other thing that you notice with the GTS is now it gets the standard rear wheel steering and that improves agility. So we drove the Carrera just to give us a sense of perspective on the regular engine. And here, the first time you turn into the corner, it seems like you've turned in too early. It just hugs the apex and then at the exit, you're like one meter too wide. So that rear wheel steering, it only turns by around two degrees but it improves agility really tremendously and noticeably as well. The whole hybrid system also works on 400 volt and because of that, the PDCC is connected to the 400 volt system. So everything responds that much quicker, that much faster. So that enhances the driving dynamics, the spring and damper ratings that have also been optimized. So you get better handling and the rear tire width, it's gone up slightly, so it's now 315mm at the rear. So all of that just adds to the performance, the dynamic potential of the car. And on the racetrack, now this is the best place to test all of it out. You can really send it hard and fast on the track. And you notice that difference to the Carrera. You think that, you know, why so much effort into this new turbo hybrid engine and it's an all new engine? This is why you realize that this car can do just so much more than the regular Carrera. Drive the regular Carrera and it's fine, right? It's, it's perfectly good. Then you drive the GTS and it's like, oh my God. So, huge difference between the Carrera engine, the three liter twin turbo flat six, also, on the exit of the corners, especially the tighter corners, you can see that in the initial part of the acceleration at the exit, this keeps pace with a turbo S. It's only once those turbo S's, turbos spool up, that the gap starts to open up. But a well-driven GTS, that can really trouble a well-driven turbo S. The grip, the agility, the response, the noise, the emotions, this is unlike any other hybrid. Hybrids are all about efficiency and saving the environment and all that. This is a pure performance hybrid. The 911 is still a brilliant sports car to drive. And this still remains like one of life's epic experiences. Throwing a 911 on a racetrack, sending it, like sending it, whoo. Ah, <laughs> and the thing with the 911 is you, know, you get your fantastic responses from the gearbox, everything, but then at the end of it, you just don't have to do anything. One cooldown lap and it's fine. This is good now to do the road drive. Nothing, you don't have to change brakes, tires, nothing, nothing, nothing. You don't have to do anything. The reliability coupled with the performance is next level. <laughs> Thank you.
Should we talk prices? Well, not that it really makes any difference to 911 sales. Everybody is waiting in line for a 911 and if you can get allocation for a new 911, well, good on you. But anyway, prices. The 911 GTS, that is 2.75 crore rupees in India, which is a heck of a lot of money. The price jump has been quite significant. In fact, the GTS costs as much as a GT3. Another story altogether that you won't get a GT3 for love or money, so that's a different story. But does it make it worth it? 2.75 crore rupees? Well, keeping pricing aside, all the work that has gone into this new engine has been phenomenal. The way this drives, especially when compared to the regular Carrera, is a big step up. Performance, the responses, the noise, the handling, the dynamics, everything has taken a step up. The 911 still remains the benchmark sports car. And of course, this is just the start. Porsche wouldn't invest so much just to do a GTS. So this turbo hybrid engine is going to underpin the future of the 911 range. Until the 911 stays ice, this is what will help it stay ice. The only drawback, no manual gearbox because that can't be mated with this T-hybrid unit. But otherwise, everything is a massive step up and hybridization on the 911 is going to keep the ice alive and kicking well into the next years. And for that, well, rejoice. Hybrids, brilliant. This is the kind of electrification that I love.